Hi, it's me, world famous drag queen Trixie Mattel, and welcome back to another year of RuPaul's Drag Race, which brings us a brand new season of The Pit Stop, the show where we recap Drag Race and have some of the most famous drag queens in the world to talk about it. And today is no exception. Today we have somebody who is a singer, an actor, a dancer, a costume designer, an activist. She has beautiful skin, and her name is Shay Coulee. What's up, girl? Hey, Trixie, how's it going? I'm so excited to be here for a brand new season of The Pit Stop. Oh my God, you are fresh off your All-Stars win. How do you feel, girl? Oh, you know, I feel really humbled because I am not traveling anywhere, <laughs> doing any shows. It is great. No, it's actually been, it's been a lot of fun. Like, even though the world has been like really super insane, I still had the opportunity to do some things that I never, ever, ever thought that I would ever be able to do. Like walking in a Savage Fenty show with Rihanna, being in a Valentino ad campaign, like, there are really cool things that you can still do from the comfort and safety of your very own home. I know, I was gonna say, I just saw you in a Valentino ad yesterday, so I think you're doing okay. <laughs> She's thriving, <laughs> folks. She's thriving. So I'm excited to get into this with you because this episode premiered with six lip syncs, and you are probably, honestly, one of the best, my favorite lip syncers I've ever seen. I don't think we could have had a more qualified guest here today. Let's just get down to it. I was <laughs> shook it. Like, to my core, I could not gather what was going on when we had our first two girls go off head to head in their lip sync. Even a normal first day at Drag Race is the most stressful day of your life. So I really felt like RuPaul looked in the mirror that day and said, what if I ruin some lives? <laughs> like she just wanted to just go wild on the first day. I absolutely can empathize with what the girls were going through, but I will not lie. I was cackling, peeing my pants, because I was just all like, these are the types of shenanigans that we tune in for. <laughs> I mean, them walking in, I mean, we'll get to it, but when she goes, do you girls like surprises? I said, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> she said, I have the Emmys. I'm gonna do whatever, bitch. She said, let's have some fun. What a nut. I loved it. What did you think of the twist right off the bat? Do you like a, a episode premiere, season premiere twist? I feel like it's always good to keep the audience like on their toes. And I thought that it was like a fantastic way for us to A, get some individual time with the contestants and B, see what they're really like out there on stage doing what we have to do as working girls. Let's be honest, drag queens, we work in live theater, poorly produced live theater. So we're used to everything going wrong at the last minute all the time. So in a way we were kind of built for this. I like spent the whole episode trying to crimp this hair only to figure out that I forgot to turn the heat up on the iron. <laughs> and if this Fashion Nova dress hadn't worked, I had another Fashion Nova dress ready. Bam, you know? Looking back at All Stars 5, you were kind of the lip sync assassin, but what would you have felt on season nine if you had walked in and been told immediately go to the main stage and lip sync? I would have been like, damn, this is gonna be so difficult because the only thing that I could remember from my first day of season nine was not being able to feel my toes because it was so cold in there. <laughs> I love it though. In this studio, is it not 59 degrees in here right now? I'm obsessed with it, girl. So let's meet the queens. First, we meet Candy Muse, formerly from the House of Aja. Do you know Candy already? I do know Candy and I love me some Candy Muse. She is one of my absolute favorite New York queens. She knows how to turn a party. She knows how to host the show. And just all around, she is such a charismatic and talented queen. And I'm so excited to finally see her. Not to mention, I'm just gonna say it, she's never looked better. This entrance look, the denim with the boombox, oh her God, makeup. So beautiful. She came in serving exactly what she needed to, and I was I'm I'm ready for it. I want more candy. Yeah, because of the first impressions, like the workroom entrance is like, if this is your only episode, God forbid, make sure it's something that tells your story. And that outfit, I was like, this is a candy muse outfit. It's perfect. Next in we have Joey J, who's wearing some red chicken feathers. What did you think of the look? I could have done without the chicken feathers. I personally have an aversion to chicken feathers. Oh God, that bitch. They just remind me of those sad boas that you see hanging up 
in like the pride corner of beatniks, you know? I know, and only Candy you would be that bitch ones. to go, are those chicken feathers? Like most drag queens would just let it slide, but Candy's like, no, we need to stop the program and talk about the chicken feathers. <laughs> Candy and Joey get called to the main stage and they have no idea what's going on. What would you think if you were there and you're like, there's two of us? God, I don't even know. I would be so confused. Same. I honestly had thought that um, there was like a glitch and we had skipped forward about 40 minutes into the episode. And I was like, mm, I had no idea. It was, it, was a, it was a nice little surprise for me. Totally. The Alyssa Edwards in me was like, I smell a stunt. Yeah, you like you know it's going to be a stunt, even though it's so obvious. Like I wouldn't have thought like, oh, they'll make us go head to head in a lip sync. Lip syncing first day, it do take nerve. Candy and Joey have to report directly to the main stage and lip sync to Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen. What do you think of the lip sync? I uh, thought the lip sync was great. I thought it was a fabulous song choice for the both of them. Like, obviously I'm more familiar with Candy, but I really thought that it was going to be something that they could both excel at. Obviously, Candy News slayed it. I think she did too. I think she kind of let her have it. Yeah, she really did. But that's, the, that's like that Candy News like fire. She's really just kind of got that like uh, about her. And can we talk about the fact that she started the number by picking up her boombox and pretending to push play? Right, we were like already in it. We were like, see? And then at the end of the song, she pushed the button again to turn off the music. I'm sorry, like, I, once you've done that to start the song, I don't, you could really, mm -hmm. you won to me. Like, so stupid. <laughs> Candy wins, you agree, I yeah. agree. And Joey retreats to the pork chop loading dock. What do you think's gonna happen here? Well, I had actually thought that Joey had gone home. I didn't know that there was like any like loading dock at this point. I was literally like, damn, they just really just had that girl come in here for a whole 20 minutes and then just send her ass home. So next up in the workroom is Denali, an ice skating queen from Chicago. Shay, tell us about Denali. Oh my God, Denali, yes, she is a fierce ice skating queen from Chicago, Illinois. I was so thrilled to see her come in and pay tribute to her ice skating roots. But after knowing what would be ahead of her, seeing the skates on her feet, I was just all like, Denali, <laughs> you in danger, girl. But apparently not. Cartwheels in the skates on the main stage, which is probably the slipperiest floor on the planet. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> she, I don't know much about Denali, but um, I loved her look and I loved that long, long, long braid. Mm-hmm, yeah, she looked like such a, just like a fierce ice skating queen. Like, I loved the look. Next up is Lala Ree and Denali did not live for the look. What did you think of the Lala Ree look? That look on her, even though it was like a blazer and like this cool kind of like face covering, it was still like stage ready and had like some impact. I felt like the the tailoring on the jacket was just like a little bit too relaxed. You know, yeah. it just was very much so like, hey girl, like I have this white jacket. So it wasn't as impactful as I would have hoped to see her like bring into the workroom, you know, just to introduce us to like who you are. Like I want some more pals, some pizzazz. Just like the previous two queens, these girls get hauled out onto the runway and they have to lip sync to When I Grew Up by the Pussycat Dolls, which I have to say, hasn't every drag queen done that song at least once? I mean, I was doing that for tips at Cold Stone Creamery when I was 16, so <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and how much money did you make down there at the Cold Stone? Oh, she was pulling in the, the tens of elevens of dollars, huh? <laughs> so the lip sync starts. What do you think in watching it? Honestly, my eyes like immediately went to Denali because I was like, I wanna see how she like is able to survive and work this in these ice skates. I could tell that she was definitely hindered by those skates. That's tough. I have to say, Denali, if you're watching this, I mean, for a girl on skates, I thought you were tearing that up. I couldn't do a log roll. Ultimately, Lala Ree wins. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. I think I do too. It was close. It was close. It was very close, but I do agree. So Denali meets Joey in the pork shop loading dock, which we all see photos of the first eliminated queens. Do you think at this point that they're very confused? <laughs> I was confused. I was just so confused to see it because I had thought that uh, Joey had gone home. 
So uh, seeing her there, I was definitely like, oh, I smell a stunt. Next up in the workroom, we meet Simone, who, oh my God, so beautiful. Have you met her before? Yes, I have. Simone is such a sweetheart, and she is so beautiful. And so nice, so f her. Absolutely. And then what did you think of the Polaroid dress? I mean, that's not a look everybody can pull off. Love that she, you know, created this very like 60s, 70s Paco Rabanne-esque like chainmail type shift dress with the Polaroids. It was just so cute. Yeah, and she has the build for it where you can kind of just like slink it on and like, uh. Then Tamisha Amon enters. What do you think of Tamisha in the red power suit? I love girls that come in with like real bold silhouettes, you know, things that really kind of just like make you think of quintessential classic American drag. That's the outfits you see the queens like work the f party in, you know? Yes. So Simone and Tamisha lip sync to The Pleasure Principle by Janet Jackson. Shay, what do you think of the lip sync? Tamisha, honestly, for me, like from the jump, once I heard that it was Pleasure Principle, I was like, Tamisha has this in the bag. I was like, because I know that she was playing this on her Walkman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I was like, I know for a fact that's what Tamisha was doing. Being a little older helps a lot on Drag Race. It helps often. Mm -hmm. You know, she was listening to it on her yeah. Walkman, and Simone just learned to walk, man. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I just like really loved uh, Tamisha's story about you know, really overcoming her cancer treatment in a year to get onto Drag Race. Like, it just was really inspiring to hear that. And then to see her come and give such a powerful performance. Uh, it I mean, you know how stressful it is to get cast on Drag Race. Imagine getting that news the same week. Oh my God. It really yeah. would be like, is yeah. the universe conspiring against me? And then she lip syncs on Drag Race and she has to sashay away to the pork chop loading dock, sadly. Did you agree with the win for Simone? <laughs> Speak it, sis. Sadly, I did not agree with this win. I love Simone. I think that she's really fabulous, um, but I, I I don't think that uh, she slayed it hard enough on this one for me. So then we see Gottmik enter the workroom. What do you think of this look, the hair, the makeup, the gown? Honestly, I thought that it was like spot on. I uh, have definitely been a fan of Gottmik for a long, long time. They're so exceptional with their makeup. And I felt like it was just like a really true, pure uh, representation of their dress. Especially like we said, what if you go home today, pull something where you, at least everyone gets who you are. And with Got Me, it's like, girl, that's her. Go to her Instagram, that is her. So then we meet Utica, mm -hmm. a kooky queen from Minnesota. What did you think of Utica? What did you think of the look? I, I thought it was kooky, but you know, I love a little kooky. And I just live for like how she just like rambles on about just like silly things. And you're like, what the hell is this girl talking about? I like anybody on their own wavelength. Like, I mean, Listen, my favorite drag queens are like Katya and Tammy. So obviously I like a little crazy. <laughs> I like a little sanity optional in my drag. Yeah, absolutely. She's a little wacky. That doesn't mean that she's not gonna have something a little more streamlined or mainstream in her purse, you know? Absolutely. So Got Meek and Utica lip sync to Rumors <laughs> by Lindsay Lohan, which I was excited about. <laughs> I was excited about it too. I honestly, gosh, the 14 year old <laughs> in me just was like, I knew every single word. I didn't realize that they were all going to come back like that. And then I was kind of like, and please don't cancel me, everybody. I honestly felt like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, Lindsay Lohan is like low key a rapper on this song. <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. Lindsay is a rapper. I was like, she's spitting this verse. <laughs> Confirmed by other rapper, Shea Coulee, get into it. That's the problem with Lindsay. She's just never been encouraged to do rap. Who do you think is gonna win the lip sync? Got me, had this one in the bag. It just was, it, I just felt like the song was something that was more in, in their vein of just like who they are and they just ate it. I have to say this, I thought it was a pretty poor lip sync on both sides. Like it, <laughs> of all the lip syncs we've seen today, I thought this was probably the weakest one, but Got Me 
definitely did better. Next up, we meet Rosé from New York City. What do you think of Rosé in this pink look? It was it was cute, and I felt like it was like a good representation of like, well, I mean, I don't really know her that well, but I felt like I got a good feel of who she was based off that outfit. Somebody who's like really just like bright, loud, fun. Yeah, I love the tiny purse that was a fake glass of rosé. I'm, I'm always here for a purse that is not a purse. <laughs> like an item on a chain, yes. love it. What do we really need? What do you, know? you need to carry? Nothing. In a purse. So then we meet Olivia Lux, who's also from New York, who's been doing drag for only like a year. What did you think of Olivia? I thought Olivia looked gorgeous. Like I would not have thought that she had only been doing drag for a year and a half. I was like, damn. Beautiful, that dress. It was a little bit WAP energy, a little bit diamonds are a girl's best friend energy. And that, with that hair, it was like a swirl with a super long pony. So Rosé and Olivia lip sync to X's and O's by L King. What did you think of the lip sync? I thought the lip sync was good. You know, like one thing that we've come to expect, I feel from like New York Queens is they're always like really strong entertainers and they both really, really, really brought it on that lip sync. Yeah, it was really tight. I mean, Olivia, the, I'm not gonna lie, fake guitar soloing on Drag Race can be really corny or really fun, but she was feeling it. When she was like, I am one with the music. She was. She was. I mean, you could tell, girl, we have to talk about Rosé's reaction. She was not pleased. She was not a believer or a believer. <laughs> no, none of the above. It was, um, it was disappointing, honestly, to watch because I felt like Olivia was having a moment because Rosé is someone that she had kind of expressed that she looked up to and Rosé didn't even have enough sportsmanship to go over to congratulate her, hug her, or anything like that. The way that she walked out was just like very much like sore loser energy. If you were hosting Drag Race, you would have been like, get back here, ho. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would. <laughs> Finally, we meet our last group of queens. We have a trio this time, and first up is Tina Burner. Shay, what did you think of Tina? First of all, Tina Burner is absolutely iconic. What a legend. And entertaining is like in her bones. You can just tell. And so I'm really, really excited to see what Tina Burner is gonna be serving us this season. I've seen Tina before and I don't shock easily. We all know I am I will cross the line. Tina, oh my God. Bianca, hang on to your wig. Cause like she, she lit a room on fire once. And I was like, this is the funniest, meanest, I've ever seen in my life. So what did you think of the look, the Tina look? I wasn't, I personally, I get the Tina burner. I didn't live. I did not live either. I didn't like the boot covers. I didn't like the situation with the hat. It was a little Chicken McNugget packaging. Yes. Red and yellow's hard though. That's just like food colors. I don't know. Yeah, it's always gonna be ketchup and mustard, you know? <laughs> like, it's always gonna come a very ketchup and mustard. And there was like some weird brown going on in there. It just was very hamburger -y, <laughs> you know? We meet Kamora from Chicago, who we both love. Kamora literally love. has looked love this beautiful Kimura. for like 10 years. And you know what? I love how she's coming across so shady. <laughs> and I feel like I'm like, I feel like we kind of understand this also being friends with Kim because there's this way that they genuinely ask you like, oh, did you really, did you need to make that decision that made you look that way? And it's I like know. a genuine question. For somebody that thin and that Gorge. nice and talented, the nerve of her to wear that big hair and make everyone out there look like a six foot five man <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, last but not least, we meet Elliot with two T's from Las Vegas. Now the girls were like shading this mall walker look. What did you think? I liked the silhouette. I loved the red pants. I did not dig the pattern on the jacket. But then again, Tina didn't like it. And mm. obviously we can tell Tina is doing a totally different type of drag. Ooh, on the main stage, this trio really lucked out because they got Lady Marmalade. The lip stinks, the lip stink. The lip sync starts, what do you think? <laughs> Immediately my thought is, who's gonna be who? Like, I mean, same. they all obviously same. have the lip sync. The drag queen in me was like, did they figure out the parts ahead of time? Did they have a three hour fight about who gets to be Christina? Right, be like, I'm Maya, you're Lil' Kim, you're Christina. Yeah. And then we'll all be pink, right? Yeah, totally. Right? 
<laughs> Tina wins. What did you think of the Tina win for Lady Marmalade? I feel like it's hard when you have multiple people, like more than just two, because it's it's hard to like focus. Um, but I would say that, you know, Tina Burner really did. She she brought it. And it was unfortunate that Kimura was in that gown because that didn't really give her liberty to do much of like anything besides look gorgeous, which she did. And honestly, if you're gonna go home on the first episode, look like Kimura while it happens. Oh my God. So Tina joins the winning queens and Kimura and Elliot with two Ts join the losing queens in the pork chop loading dock. Rosé suspects Tina doesn't like her back in New York. Shay, do you think this kind of starts off a new rivalry? You know what? One thing that I love about New York queens is they love a good rivalry. <laughs> they love a good queen. Because, you know, these girls got their neighborhoods. They got their turf. Like, I feel like New York queens are like street gangs. Like, those houses, those girls really be out on their turf being like, F that bitch. She ain't. So at the end of the episode, Rue explains to the losing queens that they can return to the competition, but first they'll have to give one of their fellow queens the chop. How goofed do you think these queens are right now? Right, they haven't seen anything from anybody and don't know these girls other than the fact that they all lost this lip sync. And I'm like, how do you make a decision like that? Because like, you know, she could be the next Trixie Mattel that you're sending home. Right, that's the hard thing. I mean, we've done All Stars. It's hard enough to make those lipstick decisions when you've been there the whole time. This is one of the best premieres for a new season I've seen in a long time. I loved it. I couldn't look away. I couldn't either. I was honestly, Trixie, I was screaming, cackling, crying, just like, I mean, feeling all the emotions. I'm really, really excited to get to know these girls. I feel like they have cast a spectacular bunch of queens, not to mention the fact that they went, produced, and did this all during this pandemic. I'm just super excited to see what we're going to get this season. Based on this first episode, who's your picks to win the whole damn thing? Based on just this first episode. <sighs> I'm trying to not allow my bias to get in the way, but I'm truly excited to see what Candy Muse has brought here. I feel like she has really taken the time to like get ready to come to this competition and do this thing. And now that it's her time, I feel like she is so poised and ready to do it. I'm excited to see what Candy does. She has a confidence that I don't think the other girls have. I would say Candy, and honestly, Tina kind of impressed me. Yeah, no, Tina was honestly my next, like right next to, to, to Candy, but Candy is killing it more on the fashion level than I feel like what I've seen from Tina, but Tina was right there. I want to thank the iconic Shea Coulee for joining me today. Where can everybody find you on the internet? Oh um, my gosh, everybody can find me on uh, Instagram, Shea Coulee, Twitter, Shea Coulee, um, TikTok, Miss Coulee if you nasty, and OnlyFans, Shea Coulee. You are truly one of my favorite drag queens from day one, and I just, I love to watch you become a world-renowned star. I just love you. Likewise, girl, like we have honestly, truly come a long way, and look at us now, we couldn't be further and closer together. <laughs> Not exactly close, TV close, you know. You're right, <laughs> but, you know. And thank you for watching The Pit Stop. Stay tuned next week when we look at episode two of season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Goodbye.